Good evening, viewers. After a long while, once again, we are present with our new session. As a uh, couple of days, uh, we were continuing with the grammatical tips, which generally help us uh, to communicate with the people. So today, once again, we have come back to the something different, which can uh, also give us a helping hand to continue with the person in this foreign language. So what exactly we are going for today? Uh, I, I thought that it would be better for us to discuss uh, how to learn English uh, very playfully. So that uh, some, sometimes this found that the students feel that it's kind of burden on them. They have to just memorize words. They have to learn grammar. They have to practice speaking English. So they uh, often refrain from the task of learning English. But if we can learn English in a very playful uh, way, uh, we just uh, enjoy learning uh, English then I think it will become a little easier for all the students. Actually, I have a bit of uh, confusion that playfully, what do you mean by that? We need to get back to the nursery level once again? No, not exactly. But uh, we should just enjoy the task of learning. Uh, say, for example, you know very well that in our institute uh, we follow certain schedules uh, for learning English. And uh, the schedule uh, generally that is set uh, for every week is enjoyable to a great extent. And the students, when they speak English, they do not realize that they are speaking a foreign language because there is no burden of any syllabus upon them that uh, they have to complete this within a certain uh, number of months. You mean that, that there is no fence at all? Exactly. They are in an open field. Obviously, yes, bound wise. Enjoy the task of learning. So long as you enjoy the task of learning, keep on learning. And after that, when you see that you are quite comfortable, quite at home in English, you need not. You just uh, keep in touch, of course. If any student thinks that, okay, all right, I have uh, learned English uh, to a great extent, uh, um, he is satisfied uh, with his uh, speaking skill and he stops speaking English and uh, consequently gets out of touch with English, very soon he will find himself quite incapable of uh, speaking English fluently. So for that reason, is there anyone they need to set up bullseye or uh, they need to make a blueprint? No, not yet. No, bullseye, uh, here I would say that uh, that varies from person to person. You may feel satisfied when you have learned uh, uh, to a certain extent that you have got the working knowledge. And you feel that, okay, right, this is what I wanted, I have learned it, I am now quite satisfied. And there are some people who are not satisfied with the working knowledge only. They want to learn more and more. They want to go deep into this language. They want to learn the nitty gritty of grammar. And this way, they want to develop their skills. Not only, uh, say some students I have seen a lot of uh, lovers of English they in fact are in deep love with English and for that reason they cannot think of getting out of touch uh, with English. Love is equal to can be over here the passion P-A-S-S-I-O-N Exactly if you don't have the passion it's not possible for you to learn anything for that matter not only English if uh, you want to learn any um, say how to play a musical instrument then also you should have the passion. Just because I am asking this question I have also seen a number of people those who come with a great uh, excitement uh, with uh, to learn this particular language but the interest they cannot uh, hold within them so the interest goes uh, like a uh, spirit evaporates or like spirit it uh, gets vanished within couple of weeks not even couple yeah, of months yeah, that, so that's on that basis what a person supposed to get but he has vigorous interest to learn this particular foreign language that's because they do not get the enjoyable task. Say, uh, we learn English here in our institute uh, by uh, participating in English plays. Say, there is a particular story uh, selected by a, a certain student and we just dramatize that story and then we uh, see how many characters are there. We collect the students accordingly and then we uh, cast the students in different roles and then the drama is uh, staged entirely in English. So when the students participate in acting this way, they do not think that they are uh, learning a certain language. They feel that they are developing their um, 
acting skills. So there is another one thing also which uh, wrecks a little for the people whenever they are trying to get involved in this particular foreign language for they initially they think that the translation versus so is it at all possible for a person whenever the person is in a playful way is trying to know this language the translation version can help a person many people are of the opinion that you need not translate if you depend on translation only then your english here will not be presentable but uh, to speak frankly i have uh, seen in my experience when a student begins to learn a foreign language then there is uh, no other way than translation you have to translate your indian language thoughts say you are thinking uh, something in the indian language maybe in bengali or in hindi and the, or, or maybe in your language that is uh, yeah. telugu and now you are translating that thought into english how fast you can translate translate that matters or if you cannot translate very fast your fluency drops and if your fluency drops you forget words then generally you keep uh, fumbling mumbling and then those who happen to listen to you feel that uh, you are not a good speaker at all so it's my uh, advice to all my students or my friends uh, who are uh, interested in learning english to enjoy the task of learning english and uh, practice is uh, speaking english in such a manner uh, as if he or she is acting okay say uh, you are uh, asked to play the role of an angry man and uh, i'm playing the role of a uh, a very ordinary man and then i have told you something or i have asked you something you are hopping mad with me or very angry with me and then very angrily you start uh, shouting at me and when you keep on talking very angrily you of course uh, should not forget that you are speaking english so when you are speaking very fast uh, using a lot of words that uh, you remember at that particular point in time then you will see how you have increased your fluency you yourself are not aware so this is what happens when we get angry often you will see that we often see at public places uh, some people get angry and they uh, start speaking english very fast usually they do not speak english so how do they speak this because there is a kind of upsurge of uh, um, of the anger at the time and to give vent to that anger uh, the person starts speaking english and uh, there may be some mistakes i'm not saying that absolutely mistake free english uh, he or she can speak at the time so in spite of making mistakes you see that he this this person the angry man doesn't get stuck anywhere goes on speaking Okay. That is what I mean. As you are going to give step by step all the information, I am very much gung out to know whenever a person is back at home, he is or are back at home present. So at that particular point in time, is there any method to practice so called speaking English? Whenever yeah. the person is himself alone is present. You are you have to just uh, just I I feel the best time to practice is early in the morning when you get up just after getting up you have not yet started speaking your mother tongue so uh, the first uh, word that comes out of your mouth is an English word and you stand in front of the full length mirror you look at your own reflection because it's very hard for you to get a partner isn't it but it's not necessary for you to look for a partner as well because it's not possible for you here so you stand in front of the mirror look at your own reflection and just regard your own reflection as your partner and start a conversation with your partner with your imaginary partner and uh, after a certain length of time you will see that uh, you, your tongue is quite uh, used to speaking english pronouncing english words otherwise uh, if you speak your mother tongue all the time and then from time to time you speak english the main problem that uh, you face you are likely to face is uh, your I mean, your kind of congestion say uh, lingual congestion you are trying to pronounce a certain word but you fail to pronounce the word very correctly and then you get totally irritated with and yourself and i would like to give you an information that for that reason maybe we get in our society or surrounding us there are many people those who regret themselves they are someone like hippopotamus monstrous prefer aliophobia <laughs> yes right exactly so there are many long words i i think that it is better for us to avoid those long abstruse words 
words because if you do not avoid the uh, words which are difficult to pronounce uh, i think that uh, people who listen to you will uh, feel very uncomfortable and uh, they so it is not your your main purpose is not to assert your knowledge if you think you know i have to assert my knowledge then I think it will be very ludicrous, funny indeed. So don't uh, have that sort of an aim. Simply uh, your main uh, desire is to uh, express your thought in English and uh, intelligible, intelligibly enough so that the person to whom you are talking can understand everything that you say. Because uh, giving uh, expression to your thought in a certain language is the main purpose of a language. So if that be the case, then how people uh, proclaim the fact or how people uh, claim the fact that within a certain period of time a language can be grabbed is it at all possible for a person no, no it is not like that that there is a certain uh, course uh, some people say that within three months uh you will learn English. But it is uh, in fact not possible for you to predict uh, how long it will take a person to learn a foreign tongue. It depends on the uh, intensity of uh, that person's uh, desire. It can be possible to some extent for to gain the practical sense or the practical knowledge, but uh, the in depth of the English language, is it at all possible? Uh, working knowledge, see, if you think of working knowledge, working knowledge to a certain extent possible for you perhaps if you practice speaking a certain language for three months. But uh, in fact, what happens uh, in a certain uh, country, uh, say for example, our country, in our country, it is very hard for you, it is very difficult for you to find the right environment in which you can speak English all the time. You, you, you come across people who do not like English, sometimes you come across people who don't uh, speak English and so uh, on those occasions uh, you have to switch over to your mother tongue and uh, as you do this as you flip flop between two languages uh, your mother tongue and English um, I, I feel that uh, your vocabulary will become very poor gradually because you are thinking in Bengali or in Hindi or in Telugu and then you are translating the thought into English and often you get stuck somewhere for lack of words and then uh, I, I just uh, tell all my friends to um, improve the vocabulary first. The first ta task of the target is to improve the vocabulary. Once you have a very solid vocabulary, very strong vocabulary, you will see that uh, you can speak English very fluently. Uh, a person who knows English can uh, detect some mistakes in your language. That doesn't matter much because after all, if you can uh, express your thought understandably enough, then I think uh, there should not be any sort of objection from any quarters. So earlier also we have already means uh, made uh, certain uh, episodes so on this uh, note. The note is that especially the mistakes and the grammatical part. So people they need to consider at the very beginning or the grassroots level while they are or at the preliminary level while they are. Especially there are some people, those who regret that the grammar is the essential thing and we need to focus on the grammar at the very beginning. No, then uh, if you are always very uh, careful that you uh, say, I have seen some people who are over obsessed with grammar. And so every sentence, when they frame the sentences, they uh, keep an eye on grammar. And as a result, uh, they cannot construct sentences properly. They get uh, stuck at places. Sometimes it takes them a long time to translate one sentence into English because they bother about the accuracy factor, grammatical. That's right. So if I, I if any person is truly interested in English, I shall advise him or her to start speaking, irrespective of grammar. Don't bother about grammar. Grammar will be taken care of afterwards. You mean that if a person speaks a wrong English also, he will, gain, he will gain the confidence. Exactly. Which will help uh, in the long run. That's right. Exactly. So go ahead first. That uh, I have to anyhow express my thought in English. Even if I make a hundred mistakes, it doesn't matter much. After a certain length of time, when you see that you have got a very good uh, grounding in English, you have got a uh, solid footing in English, then you will think of grammar, then it is possible for you to learn grammar also very fast because you have already learned the language to a great extent. Uh, uh, you know a lot of words of that language. So at the time, if you think that no, it is necessary for me to take care of my grammar, to correct my grammar, you can do that. There is no barrier there. But the initially a person should not focus should on not the grammar. Yes. 
that is the main problem in our country mainly i yes uh, i have found parents uh, imposing the burden of grammar on their kids and uh, kids uh, develop a kind of uh, aversion towards English. They feel that English means uh, grammar and uh, the uh, technical terms uh, of the English grammar, they have to memorize, they have to memorize the definition of each and every technical term and they get so very uh, irritated that uh, initi uh, just initially they start off uh, with some enthusiasm but gradually their enthusiasm uh, flags and they lose interest in this language. Okay. So I think that today we have uh, I mean, shared our opinions. So now let us uh, see our uh, educated uh, viewers what yes, they are thinking of uh, on this uh, topic or the note which one today we have shared. Truly. So let's see the upcoming uh, the comments. What's uh, the comments we are going to get? So my dear friends, you have already heard our discussion, and if you want to put in your two cents. Please, the comment box is always there for you. Communicate with us through the comment box and it will be very much uh, enjoyable. This reciprocity is very important. We are only going on uh, speaking from one end. And from the other end, you are not uh, reciprocating. Then uh, generally, the relationship doesn't develop properly. So for the, uh, in the interest, for the benefit of our uh, relationship, I think that we should communicate with each other. So please, come on, my dear friends, those of you who are watching now, right at this moment, please pause and write a few comments, okay? So that we can uh, re read your comments and uh, our enthusiasm increases. And Thank before going to wrap up uh, today's session, we should not forget that the liking option is yeah, there. That's right, and exactly. the sharing option as well. Exactly. And uh, those of you who have not yet subscribed, Please do subscribe. You don't have to spend even a single rupee for subscribing. You know very well. So it is simply your desire. If you feel that uh, this uh, sort of uh, videos should come on this channel, so I think that uh, you will not hesitate to uh, subscribe. That's yeah? right, exactly. Sorry so we can me. come as uh, some new ideas for which uh, we can help our uh, beloved uh, viewers. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you again in the next session. Yes. Bye-bye.